Well, good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. Good to see a beautiful sun shining this morning. and Hopefully we're going to see some warmer temperatures this week. And spring has been a little sluggish this year, but I think we're, good. I think we're about to get there. I think we're about to get there. It's been, uh, um, cows are looking for more green and I'm looking for more green, and, and, but I think we're going to I think we're going to turn the corner. Uh, last night was our Farm City Supper at the high school, and so it's been a, uh, a long, exciting week and a late night and early morning, and uh, we uh, had a great time reconnecting with some old friends last night, and I know some of you guys were there and, and a part of that, and so we really want to appreciate that, and uh, it, was a, it was a really, really nice evening. Over the past couple of weeks, uh, we have started a new series uh, outlining our discipleship uh, process, and we took our our uh, vision statement, we've taken our mission statement, and we've kind of come to this place and, and trying to outline for you uh, the direction that we'd like for you to go, and there's always that, that uh, uh, you know, what what's next for me? And I realize that when we gather in a, in a room, and at 11 o'clock we'll have another group of folks in here, and, and everybody comes at different places, everybody is in a different uh, place in your path to spiritual maturity and to growth and, and to development, and, and, and as we all should be. Uh, it's, it's not like you're all in the ninth grade. It's not like you're all uh, seniors and ready to graduate. It's, it's like being in a family. Uh, because in a family, you have, you have grandparents, and you have great-grandparents, and you have parents, and then you have children. And we're all together in the same house. And, and that's the way it is being a part of the family of God. We are at all different levels of spiritual maturity. And it doesn't always have to do with age. Uh, it has to do with where we are in our walk and where we're at in our development. And so the process by which we have kind of developed, and we've kind of put this in a very simple uh, uh, phrase here, so that we can all remember it and we can all kind of evaluate ourselves from time to time to see where am I in this process? How am I, how am I traveling along? Where am I at? How have I plugged in? And what am I, and what am I doing? And, and so as good teachers do, I, I want to give you a little bit of a review as to where we've been because our first week of the four-week series that we're looking at this, we talked about connecting. And that's the beginning step. And we have to have a first step and we have to take that step. And, 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 and the idea of connecting is connecting to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's very simple, uh, but it's very important and it is the first step. And, and so we talked in that first week in that first message series. If you haven't been here, if you've been a little bit unplugged, if you haven't had a chance to, to, uh, to go through this, I do uh, just implore you to please download this. It's on YouTube. It's on our website, you can get it on the podcast, however you want to do that. But catch up and, and, and try to watch these so that you have an idea of where we're at and where we're going. So that first week we talked about connecting to, to God through Christ. We connect to the church through baptism, through that outward expression of what He's done in our heart. And, and, and we follow Him, we're commanded to follow Him in baptism. And, and so we want to be able to, uh, to, to show the world the change that He has made in our lives. And so we connect to God through Christ, we connect to the church through baptism, and then we commit to coming and worshiping together. And that's what we do on Sunday morning. That's where we gather together. There's other ways to worship. You can worship in smaller groups, but corporately we come together once a week, uh, a couple of times on Sunday morning, to worship together. And we want you to commit to being able to do that. And then last week we, 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 we covered that second uh, in the, uh, uh, the four words that we're looking at, and that is grow. How do we grow? How do you grow? You, you grow continuously, and, and, and the thing that, that uh, and I hope that you're seeking to grow, because when you're, not, when you're not growing, then there's a problem somewhere, okay? I took a load of calves to uh, the CPH sale this Thursday night, and I, I weaned them all at the same time. They weren't all born on the same day. There's a few different uh, in ages, but I, 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 when, I, when I brought all those guys into the barn, they've all got their own little stall. And of course, my dad is more particular about this than I do. He, he makes sure everybody is in their right place. You know, calves, they're not really that, uh, you know, they're not that orderly. They don't have a lot of manners. Uh, my dad tries to teach manners to calves. It's really fun. Retired people have time to do such things. I don't. But anyway, so, they, so he comes in, and he'll be like, no, 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 he'll take the stick, and you get over here, and you, you here, and you're there. And, and, so, and so we line them all up, and we look at them. And when I'm looking at them, I'm like, you know, you have really grown well. I mean, I'm looking at you, dude, and, and you're, you know, you put on some weight. Uh, you're looking good, and Josh Corley's back there licking his lips already. And I'm thinking, you know, you're going to be something. You're going to be something. And then I'm looking over here, going, you know, what's wrong? What's happened? Um, 
You know, you haven't, did you not get as much to eat as the other one did? Did you not, did you not do what you were supposed to do? It, it, there, there are certain things that, that affect growth in cattle, okay? And, and now it's different in the Christian walk, but there are things that affect your growth. There are certain things that you have to do. Uh, you have to plug in, you have to be a part of certain things. And the things that we want you to do, and, and the things that we feel like will help you grow in um, your faith here at Living Faith, is we grow through small groups, Okay, you guys have been doing that and calling it Sunday school for a long time, and 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 you get together every week and you study the Bible. You get together and you share and you pray about things and you pray about what's going on in each other's lives, and and, and you grow in that process. Okay, circles are better than rows. You hear me say that all the time. And we come together weekly to worship corporately. That's great. We want you to do that. We don't want you to stop. It's very important, but also equally important, I believe is to come together with a small group of people every week and grow together, growing in the Word, growing in your faith, growing in prayer, and being a part of of, of that whole process. You have to make effort at growth. You have to make effort at growth. I had two little calves in there, and one poor guy, he was smaller than all the rest, and he just, he's still small. Okay, and as a matter of fact, when we got ready to load him up uh, Thursday or Wednesday morning or Wednesday night, I told Dad, I said, man, he's not going to go. But he's going to have to stay here, and he's going to have to develop some more. And there was another little guy. He was a bottle calf. But, man, the amount of growth that he, he because he was right there. I mean, every time the food went out, he, he learned where he could get his head and get himself positioned. He would lock his feet. I, I watched this dude. I mean, he, he, he was ready because he was a, he was a 280-pound steer when he went in there because he was a bottle calf, and he could take down 500-pound calves. And he just, he, I mean, the effort, it was hard for him to do what he had to do, but he grew despite of all the things that was going on. You have to make effort, okay? You have to make effort to grow. If you don't, if you don't have effort Okay, then then it doesn't work. So there has to be some effort. You have to show up. You have to come. You have to assemble. You have to be a part of what's going on. And, and, and so we want you to grow through your small group. We want you to grow in your faith. And then last Wednesday night, wow, we had a great turnout for our growing academy. Uh, usually this is our lightest semester because it's spring and we get it, and so Nathan scheduled us three classes uh, to start this past Wednesday night, and we were overloaded. We had over 60 adults in those three classes, and uh, I was teaching Nehemiah. Thank you guys who came to that class, and, and uh, we're gonna, we got five more weeks in this semester. If you didn't make it this Wednesday night, plenty of time. Pick one out and, uh, and, and come and, and be a part of that. Bob Barfield is teaching uh, parables, and uh, Mike Westerfield is teaching uh, Crazy Grace. Uh, and so, and I'm teaching Nehemiah, so we want you to come and be a part of that. We want you to grow in our growing academy, okay? You have all kinds of different classes to choose throughout the, throughout the year. That's our part of, of growing. And now today is the third part, and you guys have been looking at this, so you know what this is. This is not a surprise. We're going to focus on service. We're going to focus on service. And, and I want to begin with just a real quick overview of how our small groups function in this process okay shared a little bit of this last week and 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 your all of your small group leaders they they know this they've been they've been talked to we've talked to them about this and and how we're going to try to integrate these things together and as we create new small groups all of them will be created on this format a lot of you guys have been involved in Sunday school for a lot of years, okay? And we're not changing that, but what we're trying to do is to, is to transition our Sunday school classes into a fully functioning small group, okay? And, and, and so this is what it, we want it to look like. This is what we feel like this looks like to, to, uh, to be very effective. We want you to meet weekly for Bible study, okay? Everybody meets at Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. You don't have to, okay? As we grow, as we establish new small groups, hey, listen, some of you guys work at the hospital. Some of you guys work uh, in places that, that go 24-7. I, I, did, I used to do that. I worked at a radio station. You never, those things never turn off, okay? There's always something there. And so there's, there's jobs that we have that we work, shifts that don't fit into this Sunday morning deal. And I get that, okay? So if that's the case and you have to, you, we have to form a group that meets some other time, it's okay. As long as you meet, Okay? You got to step up to the trough, okay? You got to you got to meet, and you have to do the work. You have to you have to have effort, and, and finding the time where that works and that fits is great. We want you to meet weekly for Bible study. We want you to meet monthly for fellowship. You got to eat, okay? All right. Now some of us a little more than others. I get that, okay? But we all eat, 
And so try to find some time during the month that you can all have a meal together. It doesn't have to be steak and baked potato. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to go and, and clean your house and, and change everything and do whatever. You can do it here, you can do it wherever, but once a month we would love for that group of people to sit down, have a meal, eat together, and pray together. Okay? Take a little bit of time away from the study, away from the things that you're normally doing, and just sit down, get to know each other a little better, and ask this simple question of each other. What can I pray for you today? What can I pray for you this month? What's going on in your life? How can I know you better? How can I pray for you better? That's where we want that glue to begin to form in those small groups. How can I pray for you? And having that time of fellowship. And the third part uh, that we're going to talk about today is we want those small groups to participate once a quarter in some type of service. Okay, that's where the connect, grow, serve comes in, okay? And next week's going to be go, but this week is serve. We want those small groups to begin to think about how they can serve others. And so today's uh, message is focused on service. And this is what, this, if you've been in church for a long time, none of this is new. Okay, nothing new under the sun. This is God's plan from the beginning. But for some of us, we need to be reminded from time to time, and that's what we do. Okay, so here's the thing. You are here for a purpose. Okay, you are here for a purpose. You were created for contribution. Okay, God created you for that thing and, and, and for service. You were created to serve God. You were not just set here to eat, breathe, and consume resources. Okay, you were not here. You're not. You're not placed here just for that reason. Uh, we hear a lot <laughs> in this world because see, this is this is counter to what you hear in the world. In the world, you hear get the most out of life. Okay, you personally take as much as you can from life. Get the most out. Of it. That's the message that you hear from the world all the time. Get to get the most out of it. What you can gain. What you can get. What I can have. What I can receive. Well, let me let me challenge you a little bit. Okay, you were created to add to life on this earth. All right, you were created to give back. You were created to add to life on this earth, not to just take from it. See, God, you have to take from it or you can't live. Okay, I mean, that's how you get your nutrition. That's how you, but God did not create you to just be a taker, He created you to be a giver, He created you to return back to this life that we live. And, and it's important to have that attitude. It's important to understand that. It's important to know that you were created to serve God. Look at what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. All right, there it is. He, we are created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God had a plan for this. He had a purpose for this. He, he planned this in advance. And, and these good works are your service. When you serve others in any way, this is the thing that you have to understand. <laughs> we get this idea of, and I'll come back to this, we get this idea of, well, I'm going to serve God, okay? Let me, let me help you with this. When you serve other people, you're serving God. Amen. Okay? When you serve other people, your fellow men, your brothers and sisters, you are serving God. Okay? Just coming and sitting and keeping a chair warm is not serving God. It, if you come and, and participate in worship, then you can come and worship God. Okay? But when you serve other people, you are serving God. All right? So you need to understand that. That's what that means to serve God. And, and, and so that's what we want you to be able to do. And, and so in, in the first message in the series, we talked about connecting to God through Christ. And, and, and so how we do that is we put our faith and trust in Christ. We were created to have that relationship. God created us to have that relationship. We have to choose that relationship. Okay? He calls us, and it's to everybody. Okay, to everyone, he gave that opportunity to choose a relationship with him. And then when we choose that relationship with him, we call that being saved. What are we saved from? Our sins. 
Okay, we deserve death, every one of us, me, you, all of us, okay? We deserve death because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. He died on the cross to pay the price for those sins so that we could be saved. Why were we saved? We were saved to serve, okay? We are saved to serve God. We are saved to serve God. God redeemed us so that we could do His work. Listen, we are not saved by service okay we are not saved by service don't don't miss that okay you are saved to serve okay you see because don't get this idea that well this is what i need to do in order to get to heaven okay i'll tell you what you need to do in order to get to heaven you need to accept christ as your lord and savior it's a free gift okay that's what you do to get to go to one and, and then what happens is is when you realize wait a minute i deserved hell i deserved death i deserved this but while i was still a sinner he died for me holy cow i can't believe this i i want to do something you know i, I want to serve him okay it's the attitude that develops in us because he saved you okay because you're saved then he <laughs> and we are willing to serve. Listen, God redeemed us so we could do his holy work. We're not saved by, by our service, but we are saved for service. In God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, you have a place, a purpose, a role, and a function to fulfill. And this is what gives your life significance and value. Some of you are still looking for that. Some of you have figured that out. Okay, some of you have figured that out, but for some of you, you're still looking for that. And, 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 and that's the whole purpose of being a part of a small group is to help to learn where we fit, where we fit and where we go and how we, how we function in this process. It costs Jesus his own life to purchase your salvation. Okay, Salvation is free to you, but it cost him. Okay, There was a cost. It cost Jesus his life, and, and he paid a great price for you, and so we have to use our body in order to serve him. You see, we don't serve God out of guilt. Okay? We don't serve God out of guilt. All right? We serve God out of joy. All right? We should be joyful in that. We don't, we don't say, oh, well, they're having another work day up at church. <sighs> Just stay home. Okay? It's okay. All right? If you've got stuff to do, that's fine. You're good. Okay? It'll be all right. Don't, come, don't ever do anything at Living Faith out of guilt because you feel like you've got to come. Okay, because if it is, just go work on that. Okay, because you should never serve out of guilt. You should always serve with a joyful heart because of what Christ has done for you. You serve out of joy and out of a deep gratitude for what he's done for us. Listen, we owe him our lives. Okay, you were bought with a price. And so therefore we honor God with our bodies. Listen, salvation forgives us of our past. Our present is given meaning, and our future is secure. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, this is what Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true and proper worship. Listen, our lives of service is a sacrifice, okay? And it's not always easy, okay? Listen, sometimes it's hard, okay? But the things that I do in, in this life, it's not out of guilt. It's because I feel called to do that. People look at me sometimes and say, you're going to kill yourself. And I'm like, I, I'm okay with that. Okay? If I, if, I, if I die doing what God's called me to do, then that's great. Okay? I'm good with that. I, you know, I need to get rest and take care of myself and do those kinds of things. But if I'm doing what God's called me to do, so be it. Okay, we are called to be a living sacrifice, and we have to take care of ourselves. We have to do the things that we're supposed to do. But listen, he, he energizes us to do the things that he's called us to do. If we don't love other people, then we have to question whether Christ is really in our lives. Think about that for a minute. Think, if we don't love other people, I mean, that's what, he, that's what he gave us, right? That's what we talked about right before Easter. Listen, guys, I'm about to go, and I know that y'all, bless your hearts, you have a hard time remembering the things that I tell you, because you sure have a hard time living it, but if you forget everything else, just remember this. It's a brand new command, okay? Love one another, okay? If you miss everything else, get that. Love one another. And so if we, if we fail to love other people, then how do we have him in our hearts? 
John talked about this. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14, he says, We know that we've passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not um, love remains in death. It's a problem. Okay? If you don't love other people, then you got a question. you got to ask yourself. Now, you hear this word a lot. And, and, and this, we've talked about this a lot, but another term for serving uh, is, is a lot of times we get confused is the word ministry. Because when people hear ministry, and you've heard me say this over and over if you've here, been here a long time, it, it's like, okay, well, pastors and clergy and, and you know, living faith, we have six pastors and we got so many I can't even name them sometimes, and, and uh, that's inside. Uh, but when, when most people hear ministry, that's what they think of. But listen, if you're saved, Okay, if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations, you're a minister. Okay, and you have a ministry, and, and what it means is to serve other people, and you have to discover what that is. God knows, and listen, let me also tell you this: He doesn't hide it from you. Okay, He's not hiding it from you. If you're if you're wandering back and forth and been coming to church and you're like, well, I, I know God's got a plan for me, but oh, it's hidden and I can't find it and I can't. No, that's not it. Okay, if you look, you ask, you seek, you'll find. Okay, He wants you to know. He wants you to know. And, and here's the thing: sometimes it's not what you want it to be. Okay, all right. You got me. All right. Sometimes it's not what you want it to be. Sometimes you have a desire to do something, and you're not equipped for it, and you're not gifted for it, and it's not your thing, but yet that's what you want it to be, okay? And God, God has equipped you, He's designed you, and He has prepared you to do what your ministry is, okay? And, 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 and sometimes we're not happy about it, all right? Sometimes when we realize what that is, and, and here's the other thing, okay? This is, this is just, a, this is, this is, I'll throw this in for free, most of the time. Your most difficult thing in life, most of the time, your hardest obstacle, most of the thing, most of the times, the things that you've had the most trouble overcoming, that's what he's going to use. It's what he wants to use in you. Okay, it, 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 he just does it all the time. Okay, because why? Because there's somebody else out there that's just like you that's facing the same trial. They're facing the same tribulation. They're going through the same thing. They're going through the same difficulty. And, and you've come through it, and he wants you to take your pain and use that pain to help other people. Does it all the time, okay? And, and that's why sometimes it's hard to say, okay, I get it. I see it. I understand. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are saved to serve and not to sit around and wait for heaven. We have too many people and too many churches that are doing just that, okay? It's inwardly focused, and it's, it's wrong, okay? We are saved to serve, and we are saved to reach out and, 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 and to usher in the lost. It's why you were left here, okay? Because if it wasn't, when you were saved and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, he just whoop, take you on home, okay? You ever wonder why that doesn't happen? I mean, what else is there, right? So you're just going to sit around, and sing cool songs, and wait till he comes? No, 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 no. He's got a plan and a purpose, okay? And, and, and his purpose is to redeem the lost. Look, he, he doesn't want anyone to perish, okay? He tells us that in his word. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And so he, he, he wants to use you to reach those that do not know him. And it's all about that purpose, and it's all about that plan. And, and so if you're still warm and breathing and still on this earth, and you're a saved person and you've accepted Christ, your role and your responsibility is to tell somebody who's not. That's why he wants you to reach them. Why does he leave us here? I mentioned being called and doing what we've been called to do. And, and here's the thing. When you grew up and, and, and you may have thought that being called by God was something that only us pastors and missionaries and uh, people who work in the church, uh, that we're the only ones who are actually called. But, but every Christian is called in to service. And any time that you're using your God-given abilities to help others, you're fulfilling that calling. And, and so you have to ask yourself the question, how much of the time are you being useful in the service of God? The one reason that we need to be connected to a church family, one of the reasons that we need to be connected to a small group is to have an opportunity to be able to live out what our calling is. Okay, You, you can't really live out your calling in, in isolation. 
You can't live out your calling in solitude. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. We have to be busy and a part of the body of Christ because every one of us has a role to play. Every one of us has a role to play, and it's very important, and there's no small service in God's uh, plan. There's nothing small about it, okay? There's nothing that's insignificant, okay? There's nothing that's insignificant. Listen, there are many small things in this world that have really big impacts, have really big impacts. Listen, on my farm, there's some really small things called steeples, okay? And on every gate post on my farm, I have a little steeple that's nailed in about halfway, okay? It's really small. It's only about this long, okay? You guys know what they are. It's like a, it's like a horseshoe-shaped nail. And at every gate post, we nail that little steeple in, and then we place a chain around the post, and then that little, that little steeple, click, holds it. Now, I don't know about you, but if you, if you know about cows, but if the gate's open, they'll find it. Okay, you think, wow, you know, they got acres and acres and acres of wonderful green grass, and they'll just stay out there forever. Leave a gate open, okay? You just leave a gate open, and they get out, okay? And, and, and so we can build the whole fence all the way around the farm, install a wonderful gate, set concrete posts, and do all those things. But that one steeple, that one little piece of little tiny steel that's tapped into that post that holds that chain, if it's not there doing its job, cows are out every time. Okay, every time. So the most small, insignificant part of the entire fencing project is the most important. Okay, it's very small and it seems insignificant, but it's not. It's the most important thing that we have because if that thing's not there holding that chain to hold that gate closed, everybody gets out. Listen, what happens when one part of your body fails to function? Okay, listen, come on. When a a part of your body fails to function normally, you know it. Okay, when it's all working good, it all feels good. But then a stomach virus attacks and your stomach stops digesting food. Oh, nasty. Okay, it's rough, right? When one thing stops functioning and all of a sudden, if you can't hear, if you can't see, okay, all of a sudden when something stops working in your body, you know it immediately. Okay, you know it when one little part. Okay, I'm starting to figure out now that when I go up steps after I've walked my 18,000 steps for the day, when I start to go up steps, sometimes my left knee goes, no, I'm not doing this. And I'm like, oh, thank God for handrails. Okay, because it's like, oh, wow. And, and that one little old insignificant thing that works so fine all the time, when it decides it's going to act up a little bit, I know it. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, when one part of the body stops functioning, the rest of the body knows and suffers thousands of local churches are in trouble today because of christians unwillingness to serve parts of the body not being able to function we cannot sit on the sidelines and be spectators we can't sit on the sidelines and be spectators listen we're called to serve listen i'll take it one more step here okay the last step you're not just called to serve you're commanded to serve Okay, and it's not Greg. Okay, I'm not your commander. (laughs) Okay, I am not your commander. You are commanded to serve God. It is unmistakable. Jesus was very clear. Matthew chapter 20 and 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, we are called to do the same. We are called to do the same. He didn't come to be served, but to serve serve we are called to do the same service is not something to be tacked onto our schedules when we have spare time okay service is not something that we add in it is the heart of the christian life and 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 those things jesus came to serve and to give he came to serve and to give And, and and here's the thing spiritual maturity is never an end in itself we grow up so that we can give out Okay, it's the whole purpose that we're talking about, that discipleship process. We connect to God through Christ. We, we begin to, to gather together in those small groups so that we can grow. And as we grow, we realize, aha, this is what we can do with what we're learning. It's what we can do with what we're learning. You have to be able to give out. We grow up so we can give out. Maturity is for ministry. And, and here's the thing. It's not just enough to keep learning more and more. FFA, we have a motto, okay? The FFA motto is learning to do, doing to learn. 
All right? That's our motto. Learning to do, doing to learn. Learning to give and, 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 and living to serve. And, and here's the thing. <laughs> we learn things in the classroom, and then immediately we go do it. Okay? I teach them how to propagate plants. I teach them how to sow seeds. And then after we learn about those things, I'm like, all right, let's go. We're going to have a greenhouse, and we're going to do that. I teach them how to weld, and I show them the process. And we could sit in that room, and we could study steel, and we can study uh, electrodes and, and, and amperage and volts and all those things. And I can talk about all that stuff, and, and I have. I'll spend a whole week on it. And then I'll hand a kid an electrode holder and give him a, a, a pair of gloves and a helmet, and he'll be over there going, bzz, 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 and sticking and popping. And, and I'm over there kind of giggling and going, yeah, and that thing's buzzing. And, and that's how he learns to weld, okay? He learned to do, but he's doing to learn. Listen, you can read the Bible your whole life, okay? Like I've told you this before, people say, well, that guy really knows his Bible. Yeah, but he's one of the meanest old cusses I've ever met. Yeah, well, he's not living it, is he? You see, you can know it, but you've got to live it. You've got to do it, okay? So we learn to do, but we want to get out, and we want to do to learn. Rick Warren says that impression without expression causes depression, Okay? Impression without expression causes depression. And that's what happens. There's, when we study, okay, that's why we have the Growing Academy, because you have to study and learn. That's why we meet weekly to study. But if we don't do something with it, we stagnate. Listen, you guys know about the Sea of Galilee, right? Okay? Water flows in, water flows out. You guys have studied Bible maps, right? The Sea of Galilee is full of life. Okay, but you've studied the Dead Sea, right? You know why the Dead Sea's dead? Nothing comes out of the Dead Sea. It's at the end of the line. Water flows in, but it don't flow out. And so it just fills up and stagnates. And there's no life. We can, we can learn, and we should learn, and we need to learn. But as we learn, we've got to go out and do. We've got to give back. We've got to connect. We've got to be doing some things out in the world. Because this is the thing. We have to exercise those spiritual muscles. So service is opposite to our natural inclination. Okay? Our, our natural inclination, this is what churches will, will, will gravitate toward. All right? Churches will naturally gravitate to what can we do to serve us. Okay? That's natural because that's what we do. How can we best serve me? How can I take care of my needs? I'm hungry. I want something to eat. I want what I want. I'm not comfortable in this chair. I want a more comfortable chair. This is what I want. And so we just naturally will migrate to inwardly focused in serving ourselves. And, and, that's, and, and we become the Dead Sea. You see, because we continue to study, we continue to learn, we continue to learn, but we never really grow because we never serve. We never go out and do anything. We never see lives changed. And we can become stagnant. And that's what's so very 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 dangerous and then all of a sudden we begin to have that expectation that others are serving us and not the other way around the mature follower of jesus will stop asking this question who is going to meet my needs all right the mature follower of christ will stop asking who's going to meet my needs and start asking whose needs can i meet whose needs can i meet so do you ever ask that question? See, listen, as we, as we work on this and, and as our small groups grow and as this process grows, we want people to serve in the church. We have opportunities to serve in here, okay? You can serve each other here. I mean, we got folks who, that count offering. We got folks who mow the grass. We got folks who, 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 who help clean. We got folks who take down and put up before and after events. We got folks who decorate for Christmas. We got folks who, who help take care of the, the uh, air conditioning systems and all of the electric systems and, and, and all of the, the building. We have trustees that, that do those. There's all kinds of opportunities to serve. Every year we come together and we put together this thing called the nominating committee report. Okay, all that is is a list of people who we need to serve inside the church. And, and, and we, we have places for you, okay? There's things that we need for folks to do. We also have opportunities to serve outside the church. We have opportunities to serve each other. And listen, like I said in the very beginning, you want to serve God? You serve other people, okay? When you're standing in the parking lot on Sunday morning greeting people and welcoming them into the church, when you're opening the door for someone, you're opening the door for God. 
Okay, You are serving Him because you are serving His people and you're serving His creation. That's what it's all about. We want you to serve in the church, outside the church, each other, and ultimately it's all serving God. The third part of this discipleship process is to serve. And, and, and it's our hope that you're going to begin to participate in a small group. And within that context of that small group, you will have opportunities to serve. That's going to be something that each group is going to sit down and say, what are we going to do this quarter? What can we do? Can we go to the food pantry? Can we go to, can we go to the homeless shelter in Owensboro? Can, can we go and, and, and help an elementary school? Can we go help a classroom? I don't know. Okay, the, 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 the opportunities are endless. And you guys are going to have to come up with those ideas, and, and, and we want to help you with that. Because as you serve, you will continue to grow, and God will reveal to you, He will reveal to you a lifetime of ministry service. Sometimes, sometimes, you got to step out of your comfort zone, okay? Sometimes you got to step out of your comfort zone. And you'll be amazed at what God will do. I walked into a uh, situation in Nashville, Tennessee one time. Uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song about the corner down there where the homeless people hang out. And we had somebody in our church who was very passionate about ministering to the homeless and, and serving their needs. And she said, will you go down there and preach to them? I was like, yes, yes, I will. <laughs> do I want to? No. But am I called to? Yes. So I'll go. I'm not really comfortable with being a street preacher. It's not my thing. But I'll go. I went down there. And we stood up on the street corner in downtown Nashville, and we preached a message. We took sandwiches. All those folks lined up, and we had a conversation. And, and uh, we, we shared uh, the gospel, and, and we had uh, the youth were there from this. We were at New Harmony at the time. And, and after it was all over, we were just all sitting around in the park having sandwiches and visiting with these folks. And the interesting thing about homeless people is that when you sit down with them, if you'll ask them what their story is, they'll tell you your story. And I was talking to a guy who was a veteran. And, and was spending some time, and somebody came over to me and, and said, this guy over here is really depressed and having, he's struggling. He's, we, we think he could be suicidal, and we want you to go talk to him. And so I was talking to him. He was giving me his story, and, and I found out that he used to work uh, with carnivals. And, and so he would kind of been on the road and traveling around and everything. And, and, and so we keep talking, and we keep talking. And I asked him what he did in the carnival. He told me he, he uh, upped operate the fun slide. And, and we kept talking, and we kept talking. And he kind of he finally looked at me, and he said, where are you from? I said, Beaverdam, Kentucky. He said, yeah, I've been there. He said, it's a strawberry festival. He said, you the barbecue guy. <laughs> I'm like, I've come to Nashville, Tennessee, and a homeless man knows me. How has this happened? This is only through God, okay? And, and so we sat there, and we prayed, and, and, and that's, that's how God does, okay? I didn't want to go. I really didn't. But, but he gave me an opportunity to witness to and share with somebody. And it expanded our right. Listen, I can't tell you where God's going to lead you and where he's going to take you, but he will help you. He will lift you out of your comfort zone, and he will give you ministry to do. We can make all kinds of excuses as to why we can't go. We can make all kinds of excuses as to why we can't serve. Rick Warren put this little piece together, and I thought it was just really cool, and I, I want to share it with you. Uh, because I know you've heard it, a lot of you have read it, but I think it really, really kind of hits at this place because we can come up with all reasons why we can't do, but this is what he said. He said, what is your excuse for not serving? You know, Abraham was old, Jacob was insecure, Leah was unattractive, and Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered, and Gideon was poor, and Samson was codependent, and Rahab, whew, she was immoral. David had an affair and all kinds of family problems, and Elijah was suicidal, and Jeremiah was depressed, and Jonah was reluctant, and Naomi was a widow, and John the Baptist was eccentric, to say the least, and Peter was impulsive and hot-tempered, and Martha, she worried a lot. The Samaritan woman had several failed marriages, and Zacchaeus was unpopular. Thomas had doubts, and Paul had poor health, and Timothy was timid. And that's a lot of misfits. But God used every one of them in his service. He'll use you too. We want you to connect to a small group of people. We want you to connect through 
to God through Christ. We want you to connect to the church through baptism. We want you to commit to worshiping together. We want you to grow through small groups. We want you to grow in your faith. We want you to grow through our growing academy. We want you to serve in the church. We want you to serve outside the church. We want you to serve each other and ultimately serve God. Next week, we're going to learn what it means to go. Okay? But it all starts back at the beginning with a relationship with the one who died for you. And if you haven't made that decision, now is the time to get started as we go through this process together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to be here to share, Father, what it means to serve you. Because serving you means serving others, serving your children, serving in your church. It's not about us. It's about you. And it's about what you would call us to do. Father, this morning, you know where our hearts are. You know where uh, we need to be. Convict us, Lord. Just touch us, Father, and help us uh, to understand uh, the calling that you have on our lives. And Father, help us. Uh, help us to grow. And help us to understand and find our place of service within your kingdom, within your church. Lord, we pray now that you would just guide us in this time of invitation and reflection. Help us to respond in the way you would have us to. We ask it in Jesus' name.